Thanks, Scott, for joining us today. So today we are talking about RPA in business and business use cases in RPA specifically. So let's start with how do you really find a spot for RPA in your business? Well, I think this is an interesting challenge because from an IT perspective, you tend to just bucket all of the RPA use cases together and say, well, they're all either a data integration problem or a testing problem. But I think from a business perspective, you're really concerned about how to get better time to value um, and how to overcome obstacles to achieving value in your business or a change in the way you're approaching your business. And so those are the obstacles you're really concerned with. And then there, there are a bunch of use cases that fit into that categorization. So for example, if I'm rolling out a change to how we operate or a change to my business process and I need an integration to another system, I can either do that integration through APIs and get into the IT uh, change, uh, change management routine and, and get into that queue, or I potentially can speed up the time to value by using something like RPA to drive the interface without requesting a new API or access to an API and get that change rolled out in weeks instead of uh, potentially months. And so that time to value is kind of a calculation the business will do and, and determine whether that's worth it. I think in uh, prior to RPA, someone might look at that same problem and say, I'll address that with a swivel chair and have a person integrating with one system, then turn around and type it into another system. And we'd look at that as a short-term Band-Aid, right, to get past uh, an issue. But now with RPA, we can have the RPA bot do that swivel chair for you. And uh, that's, a, that's a very typical use case. Um, other use cases are things that are very repetitive in nature, like filling in Excel forms or other online forms that could be web forms or, um, or things like Visual Basic or Word, filling in those forms with data I already have access to or data that I have to aggregate from multiple systems. So you'll look at maybe the way to generalize that use case is if I need to aggregate data from multiple systems, that's one good use case for RPA, have it pull that data for me as a user. Uh, or if I need to push data out to multiple systems, I don't want to rekey that information manually. I want an RPA bot to go ahead and do that in an automated fashion. And in both of those cases, we could write integrations. We could have a system do it for us. Um, RPA gives you a way to sort of configure that behavior rather than write code for it. So basically what you're saying is when you're looking for RPA cases, rules-driven, data-driven, something that is repetitive in nature that right. people would have to do over and over, manual calculations kind of thing. Yeah, kind of dialing back, right, the generalizations to make, I think, are that it's data intensive, whether it's pulling data in or pushing it out, um, that it's repetitive in nature, um, and, and generally speaking, that it's fairly rules driven because it's, it's not an ambiguous bit of work, it's actually very clear what needs to happen. And those are, those are the basic use cases. And then the driver tends to be time to value, time to market, right, just getting something done quickly uh, tends to be the key driver uh, to, for value. That's great. Those are yeah. easy ways of getting started with RPA. So thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. You bet.